Nowadays, when it is time to charge your phone, using a micro USB cable is not the only available option anymore. There also exist wireless charging stations that can transfer sufficient energy literally through the air. A close relative to such wireless chargers is the well-known transformer, which can also transmit energy without the need of a wired connection as well. But the question is, how can we alter the working behavior of this big and heavy transformer in order to transmit energy solely through the air? Let's find out. First off, let's talk about the working behavior of the transformer. Just like every other common one, it consists of a primary coil and a secondary coil that are placed inside a closed iron core. By applying a 50Hz sine wave voltage to the primary coil, current flows through it, which therefore possesses a magnetic field strength and creates a magnetic flux density. But most importantly, it creates a magnetic flux, which flows through the entire core and thus reaches the second coil. Nevertheless, a very small portion of this flux though will not reach the other coil and thus create a leakage flux. You can actually compare this behavior to an electrical circuit. While the iron core has a relatively low resistance due to its magnetic permeability of around 300 to 10,000, the air around the iron has a much higher resistance due to its permeability of only one. Since current, or in this case the magnetic flux, choose the way of least resistance, most of it will flow through the iron, but leakage flux still does exist. And because we originally applied a sine voltage to the primary, we created a sine current and a sine flux, which is luckily just what we need to induce a voltage into the secondary. After hooking up a load to it, we can observe that we successfully transferred energy wirelessly. But as soon as I lifted off the eye section and furthermore even removed the coils from the iron core, the dream of wireless charging through the air fell apart rather quickly. To find a solution to that problem, let's go back to the traditional transformer setup. This T-equivalent circuit diagram describes the working behavior of our transformer well enough to understand the main problem. We got the resistance of the primary and secondary coil, which represents the carpal losses, the leakage inductance of the primary and secondary, which represents the leakage flux, and finally the losses of the hybrid core through eddy currents and the hysteresis. If no load is attached on the secondary, most current will flow through the cross impedance. This way the input current will have a phase shift of 9 degrees compared to the voltage because the inductive component of the iron core dominates, which is also the main reason for the output voltage. If you would short circuit the secondary coil, most current would flow through the serial impedance, which is proven by the phase shift of the input current, which is now almost 0 degrees, because the leakage inductances are rather small. But if we go back to the no load circuit and remove the I section of the core, the voltage on the output collapses. Because even though the inductance of the coil decreases drastically with this removal, the leakage inductance is now bigger than the cross impedance. This means, according to a simple voltage divider, almost all of the input voltage will drop across the leakage inductance instead of the cross impedance, and thus the voltage on the output decreases drastically. This leakage inductance is dependent on the coupling factor which basically describes how much of the primary flux will reach the secondary coil. In our case though, the coupling factor will always be small, due to air coupling. So the solution is to add a capacitor in series, which will, near its resonance frequency, cancel out the effect of the leakage inductance. In my case, my 1.1 millihenry coil will receive a 100 nanofarad capacitor, which should equal a resonance frequency of around 15.2 kHz. After adding a small load on the secondary and powering the primary with my function generator near the resonance frequency, we can see pretty much nothing. What I forgot was to add another 100 nanofarad capacitor in parallel to the secondary to achieve the same effect as with the primary. This time the LED finally lights up and showcases that you can actually put a decent distance between the primary and secondary. 
Even bigger loads, like this 1W LED, can be lit solely by using my, let's be honest, not well tuned resonator circuits. Modern wireless charging stations are definitely a bit more advanced, but also use a high resonance frequency, in this case of slightly above 130 kHz. But that does not mean that they are perfect. While charging my smartphone with a traditional wire connection, the charging process required 9283 mWh. Now if I repeat that same charging process with a wireless energy transfer, it required 15168 mWh. That is around 1.6 times as much and clearly shows that the efficiency is certainly not the best at the moment. Additionally, the utilized QI standard contains a communication protocol, which makes it almost impossible to rebuild a QI charging station by ourselves. But you can always create your own transmitter and receiver circuit from scratch. But that is a subject for another video. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.